Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. Now, chances are high your game will be populated with characters, and chances are also high that you don't want these characters standing rock still, but moving about your world. In short, animation is, for many games, a crucial step, and one that could be pretty tough to nail right. Perhaps you can make a decent looking cartoon character run cycle, but say you entertained the idea of having your player ride a dynamic, realistic horse. That idea may be crushed under the knowledge that bringing such an animal to life is no easy task. Well, in today's video, I will show you how with the use of photo reference, you can animate extremely complex animals and movements relatively quickly and easily. Now I'll be using Adobe Photoshop, but any 2D application such as GIMP will work just fine. So with that said, let's animate a horse run cycle, notorious for being complex and tough to get right. The first step I must take is search in my browser for horse animation cycles. I'll then take some time choosing an image that I feel will give me the best looking results. For example, this one, which is great because it loops. In other words, after the last image will naturally come the first image or frame. I'll then save it somewhere in my folders and open it up inside of Adobe Photoshop. I'll now create a new Photoshop file with relatively large dimensions and copy and paste this image into that file, scaling it up if need be so it isn't tiny and won't be all blurred out when imported into Unity. And guess what? All one must do to get a smooth and realistic horse run cycle is paint over each and every horse image. Now you can do like me and paint a silhouette of the horse or perhaps only draw its outline and then color it in using hard shadows for a cartoony effect. Obviously many of you may not actually want a horse as mount or animal for your game but nothing stops you from turning this horse into a dinosaur and simply using the full reference as guidelines for where various body parts should be and when. When using this method to animate, I highly recommend, however, that you quickly paint over the images in a silhouette style, like I have done here, and test how it looks in Unity, before actually spending a pack of time rendering your creation with minute details, shadows and colours. Because there is the risk that the photos in motion may not look very good or fit to your game's animation style, so quickly sketching out the animation and testing it can save you a lot of time. So once all your frames have been drawn out, it's time to import all this into Unity and actually get our animation working. Now for those of you having looked at my beginner level tutorial on animating game characters using Photoshop, you'll know that to do so we must make a sprite sheet. Now making a sprite sheet in theory is very simple, but mustn't be rushed. Basically we need to equally space out each frame of our animation. To help do so, you can head over to View, Show, Grid. Now, to tweak the grid settings, simply go to your Preferences and choose Guides, Grids and Slices. You'll then be able to edit your grid line and subdivision's frequency. Note that you'll often have to play around with these two values before you get a good and helpful looking grid. You then need to define a box in which you can place your frame. For example, I have a box right here. This acting has the ground, so I'll place my frame one accordingly, keeping an eye on my full reference and seeing that indeed the horse at this stage is in midair. So I'll make sure its feet don't actually touch the ground. I'll continue this process with frame two, now also keeping an eye on the location of my first frame in its box, seeing that the tail, for example, is just one little box away from the edge, and so placing this second horse with its tail also one little box away from the edge. Now, of course, this doesn't need to be perfect, and you can very easily go back in and edit the sprite sheet if need be. With that done, we must now give our scene a transparent background and export our file as a PNG into our Unity project. 
awesome. I'll now select my newly made sprite sheet and change its sprite mode to multiple. I'll hit apply and hop into my sprite editor. I must now slice up each frame into individual sprites. So I'll hit slice and select grid by cell size for type typing in 1000 pixels for the X and Y axis. The reason I type in these two values is because my frames are placed in boxes that are 1000 pixels wide on the X and Y. You can now shift select all the sprites making up your sprite sheet and drag and drop them into the Unity scene. This will automatically create an animation. So choose a location to save your animation in and then inside your animation window, which you can find right here, hit play and see how the horse looks in motion. You can of course very easily slow down your character by decreasing the sample's value and speed it up by, you guessed it, increasing that value. To gain time when painting your horse, you'll notice that deleting every two frames will not greatly alter the animation's appeal, but will decrease the time by two needed to animate your creation. And of course, you can play around with the cycle's timing, perhaps making a certain frame last a little longer than others for extra weight by simply dragging all frames after the one which you would like to hold to the right. And with that, you've successfully brought to life a dynamic quadruped. But you don't need to stop there. You can use this method to animate realistic looking human run cycles, dogs, jumps, goats, whatever photo reference you can find really. And as I said, a horse photo can easily be used to animate a four-legged dragon or dinosaur, and a realistic human reference can, with some imagination, be a guideline to bring to life a cartoon cyclope or whatever other humanoid creature you may dream up. If you feel this method really works for you, you can also shoot your own photos. All you would need to do is film yourself doing the desired animation, screenshot the key poses and repeat the process showcased earlier in Photoshop and Unity. And that will mark the end of the video. Now I really hope this tutorial will help some of you bring to life their animated visions. If it did, or if you simply want to be awesome, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. You can also follow me on Twitter and join the Blackthorn Prod Discord server. With that said, happy animating, stay tuned, cheers!